Hello, everybody. This is Barry Johns. Welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. And so if you're considering or you have bought a new Apple Silicon computer for uh, for your DAW, okay, and this is not necessarily, this whole video is not necessarily specific to buying Apple products. However, there's definitely some limitations on the new M1 products, and that is this thing called ports, all right? And so if you do uh, like the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air, you have very limited Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back of that, as well as traditional USB-A uh, type connectors. And then you get into the MacBook Pro and you only have three Thunderbolt 4 ports and that's it. And of course, the Mac Studio gets you up to some more ports uh, and really something a little bit more manageable, but really all of them, if you're in uh, a situation like I am, and I think a lot of people probably are, uh, if you're not yet, you'll evolve to it at some point, uh, I have to imagine, um, and, and, and that is you need more ports. You've got more peripherals that are not just generic peripherals like plugging in a you know a mouse or a keyboard. We all do that via Bluetooth these days, but you get where I'm going with it. You know, very simple USB-A type stuff that doesn't require a lot of data through and power and everything to it. But um, but if you're like me, you know, I've got quite a few hard drives, a combination of old external backup drives as well as external SSDs and external Thunderbolt 4 NMVE enclosures, all right? And so in amongst of other things too. So um, I've done quite a lot of reviews, some detail analysis and productivity measurements and everything on all the various Apple Silicon, anywhere from the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, as well as the Mac Studio Ultra. You'll find all of those videos out there um, on my channel. Uh, but one of the things I realized very quickly in the beginning of this is I'm gonna have to ex add something to give me some additional I.O. Uh, because the, the, the ports on any of those computers is simply not sufficient for my studio. And, and so, you know, I think it's a very important distinction to understand the difference between a hub and a dock. Like a hub is typically bus powered, you know, that they're really fine for connecting up several uh, traditional old style USB-A type things, again, like mouse, mice keyboards, things like that, and maybe one external SSD hard drive. But if you need to connect up multiple uh, devices of that, that is simply not going to work with a hub, uh, especially multiple hard drives, especially SSD hard drives, okay? So that's not gonna work with a hub. That's why you've got to invest some money and they are more expensive into getting a dedicated powered dock. And so, um, you know, a dock these days is going to cost you anywhere from three to four hundred dollars in that typical price range. Uh, but it, 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 at the end of this video, you're going to quickly find out why it's going to be a necessary buy for you if you're going to do any kind of productive work and not and, and minimize any potential errors that you're having out there or will have if you don't have something that is capable of doing it. So let's talk about my studio for a second. I can tell you what I've got going in mind. But before I do that, I, let me hold that for a second. So once I realized I didn't have enough ports, I quickly identified there was only one Thunderbolt 4 um, um, powered dock coming out at the time, and that was the o OWC. And that's a unit I've been using up until today, all right? And, and, and so, but one of the things I found out about the OWC is that if you start connecting a lot of things to it, especially stuff that has high data throughput, like SSD and NMVE drives and things like that, you're gonna start to run into some issues connecting all of that. Um, and, and, and so, for whatever reason, it can't seem to balance all of that in the way that I needed it to with the type of devices I was connecting to it. So uh, uh, today I ordered it. Well, I ordered it a while back, and it arrived today. That's the Cal Digit Thunderbolt Four, um, um, Thunderbolt Four dock. Okay, and it's a power dock, and it is the. I'm going to say it. It's the Mac Daddy one. It has more ports than the OWC. It's it is slightly more expensive, but worth every penny. And everything I've connected to it so far, it has not missed a beat on. It has been flawless today. And I really spent the better part of this morning trying all the things that were giving me problems with the OWC. So today I'm actually using both of them. I have the OWC dock and the CalDigit dock and all of my peripherals connected to it. And believe it or not, 
every single port is filled right now. So let's talk about my particular studio. And may I probably have, I'm probably a little bit more anal about this stuff than many of you are. Um, but but at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you about mine. Let's talk about traditional USB ports going into it. You know, I've got a MIDI I/O that I'm using. That's a USB port. I've got my Kemper, my um, my guitar amp profiler that I've got where I can control it via the computer via USB. Let me look back around here. I've got um, this device here, which is basically a control surface for Final Cut Pro as well as other DAWs and things like that. And then I've got this RME uh, controller for my UFX um, uh, Fireface Plus. And so I've got that, that, that to control that. Uh, as well as several other things. And those are kind of your generic USB-C that don't pull a lot. Now let's get into the things that pull power. Well, back there, as you can see, I, I don't know if the camera is low enough for that, but back there, I've got two SSL UF8s, and they actually have to have a solid USB-C connection, okay? Um, because they will not work on a traditional uh, USB-A type connection. They require more power than that, and they each require their dedicated on, dedicated connection. Now, I will complain out to SSL for a moment because you've got the ability to kind of daisy chain those via USB, and I'm here to tell you, SSL, it don't work, okay? So, but I love those control services. I love them, okay? They replaced the 24-channel D command here in the studio. Uh, look back around. Uh, I obviously have my UFX Plus uh, that is connected um, to it, um, as well as some hard drives. So let's talk about hard drives. I have two 14 terabyte backup drives. One is a main backup drive that backups everything I've got. The other one is a backup of the backup. I believe in redundancy. I do a backup of that once a week, and then I unplug it from a power source. Because we get a lot of lightning strikes here in Central Florida, and I unplug it from a power source. So at least if I have to go back a week, I'm only going back a week. Okay, so I've got that. And finally, now that I've got all these things, because you watch my previous video, you'll find out where I had to reinstall everything on my operating system because I didn't have my redundancy backed up when I reconfigured my studio back there. Blah, 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 blah. Go watch that video. You have fun. Uh, but, but, um, so anyway, I unplug that, and then once a week I plug it back in and I do a backup again. So I'm always within a week of that, just in case. That's my backup measure. Then in addition, in addition to that, I have two uh, external Samsung SSD drives. Um, I have those connected, and then I also have two Thunderbolt 4 uh, NMVE external enclosures. Uh, that I have connected to it. And so I've got all of that kind of going back and forth at the same time. And that you just, you're not going to do that kind of stuff with the hub. You're just not. And there's certainly not enough ports on the back of the computer. Now, do I need all of that? No. Could I redo some things to be able to do it? Yes. But the reality is that's that's kind of what I'm dealing with now. There's no point in, in, in going and replacing a hard drive when I've got hard drives at work as it is right now, okay? So let's go take a look at this thing and let's see what this new Cal Digit looks like and kind of the various I.O. ports and everything on it. Let's head on over to that right now. All right, so here we are at the front of this unit. You can see we've got our uh, two different size SD card readers. And then we've got a uh, headphone output jack. Over to the right of that, we've got a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 uh, 10 gigabyte uh, connector with offline charging of 7.5 watts. And then down below it, we have two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabyte per second um, connectors, one being 20 watts of power, the other 7.5 watts of power. Okay, so one can be used to bus power a lot of things. The other can be used to charge something, basically, okay? All right, let's flip this thing around to the back, and now we're going to look at the gigabyte uh, Ethernet port. Then down below that, of course, where you connect the power. Over to the left of that, you're going to see the security slot. So you can secure that bad boy so nobody walks away with a pretty expensive little box that you can almost put in your pocket, but it is built like a tank. Then we move over to the right, and we've got four USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabyte per second uh, ports, uh, all four with the ability to provide 7.5 watts of power. Then down below that, you've got the computer upstream host. That's where you're going to connect your computer to the um, 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 the, 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 the dock, da, 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 if I could get that stuff out, to the dock. And then right to the side of that, you've got two more uh, Thunderbolt 4 U slash USB 4, 40 gigabyte per second. 
uh, with the ability to provide 15 watts of power. Then above that, you've got audio in and out. To the right of that, we have another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabyte per second port. Down below that, we've got a display port, uh, and that wraps up the CalDigit Thunderbolt dock. Let's go on and see what's next. All right, so hopefully now you kind of you kind of get the amount of ports that are on this thing. You can go over to o OWC's website, take a look at that particular dock. But I'm here to tell you, you want to get the Cal Digit. The thing is built like a tank. The power supplies. I mean, I was really surprised it had such a big power supply to it. Um, but I guess maybe that speaks to its power. Ah, no pun intended. Whatever. Leave me alone. Uh, uh, but but anyway, it's built like a tank, and I and I think I'm going to be really happy with it. I know this is the type of money that you don't want to have to spend on your studio. You'd rather spend it towards instruments, plugins, uh, hardware, and all kinds of other things. And and but but like it or not, it's just a necessary thing that I strongly think that you've got to kind of forecast into your budget if you're thinking about upgrading one of these new computers with limited ports, okay? So if you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like, that subscribe, and that notification bell so you know when I got a new video out. Uh, do me a favor, leave some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your experiences are. If you've got other solutions maybe you haven't talked about today, throw those down there. Let's talk about that. I am certainly willing and always wanting to learn from other people. Um, so until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.